Hello viewers, welcome to our program on immigration and you. I am your immigration attorney Michael Fulwani and once again we have with us my law partner David Nachman. David, welcome. Thanks so much Michael. Always a pleasure to be here with you. Today's program we want to talk about something we never did before. Actually this is coming uh, from a call to me from a, a client who said that uh, he came a few years ago on a visitor visa and one of his friends told him that I, I had a lawyer that got me a work permission and I can also get you if you want. He said, good news, why not? So he took him to that lawyer, he gave him $1,500 and he got some information and some forms, he doesn't know what forms. He tell her, sign here, sign here, sign here, give me your photos, give me the money and I'll get you the work permit. So he filed, what he really filed was an application for political asylum. And obviously at that time also even now when somebody applies, they get a permission to work until the case is decided. So when the permission to came to work, he was very happy. Oh, he did my job. Sometime after that, there was a letter came from immigration to come for the interview. So he went to the lawyer and say, he said, don't worry, I don't have to go. You just go there, tell them that you had a problem with the police in your country. So you have to come here and apply for this political asylum and that's it said, okay, fine, that's easy. He went to the court, uh, went to the immigration service, and that's what he said. Obviously, there were no documents, no rep uh, representation, no legal brief or anything, so they denied it. After some time, then he got a, a notice from the Im uh, immigration judge because they put him in deportation proceedings. So then he again went to the lawyer. He said, I got this one. He said, believe me, no, you don't do anything at all. Don't go to the court. And that's it. Just stay put. Nothing will happen. So that's what the position. Now he found a girl. He wants to get married to a U.S. citizen. And the question is, the, I still have a deportation order. They are saying you cannot do it if you are previously deported. But I told him that there are, there are ways that lawyer told him that you can apply. For another lawyer that he went to, he told him that you get married to a U.S. citizen. This may be possible. And he's confused. He's worried what to do. Now, that case, us, case actually reminds us of uh, a number of times that we have said about how to choose the right lawyer. This wouldn't have happened if he found a good immigration lawyer, then the immigration lawyer wouldn't have done all that. So the message to you is learn from this kind of uh, lesson or, or case and you do what is the right thing to do is if you are trying to find a lawyer, find talk to your friends, talk to your relatives, find out if anybody is experienced with good lawyers. And then a lot of other things you could do. You can take the name of the lawyer that you are now hiring and go on a, a website and go Google it. Actually, a lot of lawyers have at the websites and Google information about the person, about the reviews, about oh, oh, you know, bad comments or anything. Take your time. There's no rush. If you, if you spend a week or 10 days on finding a good lawyer, that is always a good idea to do rather than rushing into. So these are some of the practical points. Also, if you already have a lawyer now and you are concerned whether he's doing the right thing or not, uh, always a good idea to find a good lawyer, good law firm and get a second opinion. So if the lawyer sees that he's not doing the right thing, at least he guide you properly. And I, I want David to tell some more uh, comments uh, on this as to what kind of after retaining a lawyer about a retainer agreement is there or the, how the lawyers respond or not respond, some of these things people should know. Okay, well, Michael, uh, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, I think that uh, the internet is a great place to find out about your potential uh, legal counselor. I think that um, there are, there's a lot of really good information on the internet, but I also caution uh, many, I am a, also, as you know, a teacher at, uh, uh, Fairleigh Dickinson University where I teach paralegal studies, immigration law and paralegal studies. And I always tell my students that one of the things that they want to be very careful of is just as much bad information on the internet as there is good information. But there are some fairly reliable sites where people can get good information about lawyers and their ability to practice. Uh, there is one which is highly recommended, uh, which is AVO. It has rating system for lawyers, and it discusses the lawyers and how much experience they have in the particular areas. And that is a nice guide. I think that Michael was giving an example of someone who comes in 
for example, and um, maybe meets with a, an agent. And unfortunately, agents, of course, have very little scruples. And these are the types of people that would have you sign documents and put you into a situation. And where we've actually seen it, not so much, I mean, there are bona fide asylum claims, especially from India. And uh, really, those cases need to be vetted very, very carefully. Because uh, we do have individuals who are from uh, Punjab who do have bona fide cases. Um, but there are cases that are brought for the sole purpose of getting the work authorization. And those are very, very bad cases. Michael probably pointed out. What ends up happening is those could end up in front of the court. And uh, if they end up in front of the court, then of course what ends up happening is that the individual uh, could potentially be uh, removed in absentia. If there's a removal in absentia order, that order has to be reopened. If an individual was in a removal proceeding and they get married to a U.S. citizen, they're going to be held to a very, very high standard because the standard is not just bona fides. Yeah. Then it's a much higher standard. It's called bona fides uh, you know, on steroids. So it's a much higher legal standard that that individual is going to have to cross in order to demonstrate the bona fides of that marital relationship. But if they are, in fact, able to cross that, then, of course, um, they can try to uh, reopen the case before the immigration judge and to try to bring up that affirmative benefit this in front also, of the immigration on the, judge. On the question of uh, reopening the previous deportation reminds me of a court case of uh, Luzada. 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 No, it, this was, I think, sometimes in 1988 when the court made this decision on Lozada about ineffective assistance of a lawyer. So case like that we talked about before, a lawyer really uh, pro either didn't even provide any good assistance or ineffective assistance as a result of which he ended up in getting a deportation. So in order to get the deportation order reopened, this is a good thing to also put in the Lozada case, but there are some requirements for that in order for the court, and court has considered in any cases that if this is what happened, they reopen the case, uh, and even the deportation is uh, also dropped. The requirement there is that you have to send a letter to your previous uh, lawyer who messed up the case, and give him an opportunity to say he wants, he wants to do. Some of sometimes they also want that uh, there should be some complaint done by the applicant to the bar association about this happen. So some of these requirements can be made. People have done it in the past. And it is, I've seen even criminal cases. Even in criminal cases, they are supposed, the lawyer is supposed to tell him that if you plead guilty, right, uh, then there's, we can drop the case. That's uh, Padilla. That's huh? a different case. That's yeah, a different Supreme case. Court case of Padilla. Yeah, but I'm saying this right. is another case where a person who's committed a crime and uh, the lawyer says, just plead guilty, what is there, $100 fine, $200 fine, no big deal, come on. Uh, and so he says, okay, fine, then pay, I'll pay $200, it's done. Later on, when he applies for immigration, then he see that this is a case that involving moral turpitude. It's a big problem for the immigration case. And the individual wasn't advised of the potential ramifications yes. early on. Yeah. So therefore, that is not advised, and then the case can, and the court can then drop that case, or what you call is a change. Well, it, it actually has post, to do with retroact post conviction post relief. Post conviction relief. Yeah, but it has to do with the retroactivity of Padilla, which in some states, yeah. Padilla is recognized retroactively, but in other states, it's not. So there yeah. are a lot of these good things to know, and again, I repeatedly saying, good, go to some good lawyer, do your homework, and then you decide and. Always take a second opinion if you are not satisfied what's happening. Exactly. And that's one of the reasons why we are very careful about posting the backgrounds of our legal staff on our website at www.visaserve.com, where you can feel free to read about the collective experience of all of the lawyers on our website and get yeah. a sense of how much tremendous experience we have in all of the different areas so that we can best serve uh, you. Yeah, see, as we were saying earlier, that also there are some steps you take when you hire a lawyer, even a good lawyer, I'd say. One thing you make sure, whenever the lawyer files any papers for you, keep a copy with you. We, all the time we get clients, say, show me your previous file. Oh, he didn't give me any copies. Oh, I cannot find him. Even the lawyer is gone, lawyer has disappeared. So make a copy of everything that is filed with immigration. And any letter comes from the immigration to the lawyer, he has to send it to you. 
So, basically this way you have to be in the loop, you should, uh, in the communication, you should know. Um, sometimes immigration service in an RFE asking for more evidence. I have seen some cases where the lawyer said I didn't get it and then it's denied. So, you have to look for these things and basically RFE gives a date that you must respond by such and such date. You should put a note in your own diary to make sure that the lawyer has filed it before that or not. Corresponding, and, you know. Right, and, yeah. and like Michael's saying, if you ask the lawyer or purported lawyer for a copy and they won't give it to you, that should immediately send up a red flag for you yes. as to why they're not giving you copies of the documents that you're signing. Something must be wrong here. Exactly. Possibly. Corres yeah. Correspondence, you know, basically all you send an email to the lawyer, the lawyer may be busy, may take a day or two even, but he has to reply. And you keep on send call making calls, he does not return your call. You keep on sending emails, he does not respond to it. Something is wrong there. Uh, either, either nothing wrong, but he's a kind of lawyer who doesn't bother to, to do what needs to be done. And it's a very, very important thing. And how many cases you have no idea? Also, listen, if you change your address from one to another place, you are supposed to file an AR-11 form and notify the immigration service. We are seeing so many cases all the time when the petitioner filed a petition for a brother and sister. And then they are just waiting and nothing happened, nothing happened. Finally, now they go online and find out Oh, it was denied in 2011 because you did not respond to the RFE. But I never got it. He said, never got it. You talk to your lawyer. So some of these things, if you do right, it's very, very, very important. And a lot of people don't realize, Michael, that that AR-11 is actually regulatory. It exactly. specifically states in the regulations that you need to file an AR-11 within a certain period of time after your move to notify the government authorities that you're going to be moving your residence. And there are, there are other yeah. developments taking place. People, he was a single when the petition was filed. Now he's married. You have to inform the immigration service. There may be change in the category or whatever the update can be done on that. Person has died, petitioner or the beneficiary. You should inform the immigration service. Somebody was uh, married before, now he's divorced. Inform the immigration service because this will benefit some people. Somebody is in an F3 family, third preference, married category, which are the many, many years of waiting. And after the divorce, he becomes single. Then he goes to a family first preference. So these are all the things we, as a good lawyers, we know all these things. We know what is very important. We go by the book, as we say, right? And unfortunately, not uh, when David was talking about agents, but David. We have also seen our brethren, some lawyers, some lawyers also. <clears throat> I mean, I, I know a lawyer many years ago who used to do political asylums like anything. And what he used to do, he let's say he did a political asylum uh, about a few months ago by Mr. Singh. Okay. Now this time Mr. Patel is applying. So he'll tell the girl, oh, just do, do the same thing like Singh. <clears throat> you know what she did? She prepared the whole thing and did not even change the name. And of course, uh, he did a lot of those things. And uh, unfortunately, he was arrested, I know, and he went to jail for five years. But that was only one example. Even now, we see sometimes how many lawyers are disbarred, how many lawyers. David, we see all the time notifications comes to us, the disciplinary action taken. So I'm not Quite saying it may be a minority, it may be a small number. There are. Most of the time, I would say, those who are members of the immigration lawyers, uh, yes, they are okay, they are good, most of them, but some still do not comply with what they should do. Exactly. Well, I think uh, we should wish them, uh, what, President Day? Uh, Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Happy okay. Valentine's Day. Happy and President's Day. Right, right. Yeah. Happy Valentine's Day. Have a fun, enjoy with your partner. And uh, don't forget Michael Fulwani and David Nachman. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ed. Bye. Bye for now.